Anything that says hydrogenated, run the other way. So it seems like everywhere you turn around these days, you're going to find another keto-friendly or low-carb bread. And it's great to see this stuff coming out there. It's great to see people putting their best foot forward when it comes down to living a lower carbohydrate lifestyle. But let's be real, just because it's keto doesn't mean that it's healthy or that it's clean or that it's truly even keto friendly, okay? A lot of people could easily jump on a marketing bandwagon and slap a keto label with no real regulation. Nothing's really defining if it's keto or not. So I'm seeing a lot of these keto breads. And this started a while ago. I did a video when I went to Costco and I found that they had keto bread. And I uncovered uh, keto bread there and I took one look at it and I was like, whoa, is this what's out on the market right now? So I figured I'd put together a little shopping guide to help you understand what you should be looking for on a label if you're shopping for true low carb bread because there's a few things you really need to just be careful of. Hey, if you like these kind of videos, you like consumer reviews, you like keto, you like low carb, you like fasting, this is the channel for you. So please do hit that red subscribe button down in the bottom right corner and then hit the bell icon to turn on notifications. Uh, after this video, a little bit of a spoiler alert, if you do want to check out a company called Unbun Foods, I put a link down below in the description. These guys have really nailed keto bread. And I know it might seem biased because this is a how to shop for keto bread video, but truth be told, really is a stellar product. So check them out down below. Okay, made with almond flour, made with psyllium, just a really cool thing. They've got tortillas, they've got buns, they've got all kinds of stuff. So down below in the description, but let's also arm yourself with knowledge so you know how to shop because they're, they're everywhere, okay? The first thing you want to look for is net carbs. This sounds very elementary to someone that is an avid keto person, right? But it's important to note because I've seen a couple of particular brands, I'm not going to name names, that claim high fiber and therefore implying it's automatically low carb. Net carbs are what matters, not the fiber content. If the net carbs are still going to be 5, 6, 7, 10 grams of carbohydrates, even if the fiber is exponentially higher, that does not mean that it's keto friendly. So disregard fiber at the end of the day and look at the net carbohydrate number. That being said, there's a curveball. So if that net carbohydrate number is factoring in sugar alcohols, it throws a pretty big wrench in things. Because as far as what the FDA requires on a label, sugar alcohols can technically be subtracted from the net carbohydrates. So that means you could have a bunch of sugar alcohols in something and it's going to tell you that it's low carb even though those sugar alcohols may contribute to your overall carbohydrate load. Not necessarily blood sugar, but still carbohydrates, okay? So these are not necessarily always bad, but there's something you wanna be cognizant of, okay? Xylitol, maltitol, mannitol, isomalt, even glycerin in bread, you have to be careful of. Because there was a study that was published in the Canadian Journal of Diabetes. It looked at xylitol, and they found that about 50% of xylitol is actually absorbed. Meaning 50% of the carbohydrates from xylitol were actually affecting the person as a way of carbohydrates. So a general rule of thumb is to not follow what the net carbs say when it comes to sugar alcohols. Take the sugar alcohols, divide it by two, and that is the true carbohydrate effect. So simple math here, if you have 10 grams of sugar alcohol in something, you're gonna count five of those carbohydrates. You're gonna count half of those because it's safe to assume that 50% will get absorbed. So in other words, be very cautious with sugar alcohols. A lot of times they'll load them into a product to add flavor to something that might be a little bit bland. Another thing is the types of fiber. Okay, chicory root is commonly used in keto breads or low carb breads. Small amounts of chicory root is fine, but the amount that is needed in bread to really give it the volume and the texture that they're after is quite a bit. And there's quite a few studies that demonstrate that chicory root can cause some pretty severe gastric upset. Another thing you might see is inulin, which is going to be an even more concentrated form. It, again, inulin can be used as a prebiotic fiber and not always bad, but if you're consuming two slices of bread, you're gonna have a lot of inulin, which is probably gonna make you feel fairly uncomfortable. But when it's combined with some other things, then it gets really sketchy. Okay, so now we're talking about the oils here. This is the big piece I need you to be careful about. Okay, do not turn off this video, listen to this piece. Okay, first of all, anything that says hydrogenated, run the other way, okay? I don't wanna just call out a brand, but the one that I saw in Costco that time is totally shelf stable, doesn't need to be frozen, and the reason that it's shelf stable is because they hydrogenated soybean oil. Fully hydrogenated soybean oil. 
Oh no. Hydrogenation is where you take an oil that is normally fragile and you add hydrogen to it to make it shelf stable. Well, this makes it a trans fat. This trans fat cannot be broken down in your body. We know from even mainstream media stuff that trans fats are not good. Okay, so avoid those at all costs. Soybean oil in general, something you wanna avoid. Low quality, very fragile omega-6 that denatures, has strong estrogenic properties that we don't want. Canola oil, still like 28 to 40% omega-6, depending on how it's been processed. Grapeseed oil, 70% polyunsaturated fat that is very low quality. Okay, so we just have to be very careful with these. And then another one that's thrown in the mix a lot is corn oil. That does not belong on your keto diet. So remember, we need to have the proper ratio of fats. If we have so much in these low quality, fragile oils, what happens when you heat them is they denature and they cause a problem. I mentioned unbun foods. I'm just gonna show you an example really quick. Okay, let me just read out these ingredients. Water, almond flour, egg whites, flax, coconut flour, psyllium husk. That's what they're using to give volume instead of chicory root and inulin. Okay, whole egg, apple cider vinegar, cream of tartar, salt, sodium bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda. Super clean stuff. And they also have tortillas, which is a first on keto. So yes, I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, okay, Thomas, this is a pitch. You're talking about product. No, I'm giving you information, but I will honestly say these are the best keto breads and tortillas I've ever had. So make sure you check them out down below in the description or get them at your local retailer, which will also be in a link down in the description. I want to extend a big thank you to them for being a part of this as well. Just awesome, awesome stuff. Make sure you check them out. So let's continue on a little bit more with some other things you want to look for. Again, I don't want to sound contrived. I want you to be able to make a decision for yourself. The big piece that I get concerned with is wheat. Okay, so people will use wheat gluten or companies will use wheat gluten or they'll use wheat protein. We've got a bread base that has modified wheat starch, wheat gluten. We have to be careful with wheat, especially on a ketogenic diet. On a ketogenic diet, one of the main premises that we're doing this is for the modulation of inflammation. There is science that shows that wheat triggers the release of a protein called zonulin within your body. And the zonulin allows for things to get into the bloodstream passing through the small intestine. It makes the junctions that are usually tight in your small intestine much more open. When these proteins and when the zonulin goes through and passes into the bloodstream, it can trigger an immune response that can cause all kinds of issues. Okay, we have TGAs too, which can have an effect overall on TPO or anti-TPO antibodies with the thyroid. Long story short, we don't want to have this. Okay, there are multiple different ways to go through with this. Coconut flour, almond flour, other sources of flour psyllium husk even to give volume where you don't have to use wheat or wheat gluten. A lot of brands use it because it's cheap. We're looking bread. So when most people or most companies go out to make bread, they're already in the game of high margin with bread. Okay. Keto is different. We don't subscribe to the same philosophy that we should with most bread companies. Okay. We're looking for things that are going to give us a better fat content, a lower carb content, not just random empty ingredients combined together. So I'm going to outline a couple just so that you have an idea. Okay. The Costco keto bread that I talked about, hydrogenated soybean oil is in it. Also wheat gluten, also chicory root. Okay. So kind of a triple threat there. Then there's a brand out there called Sola, which I thought was good at first until I started looking at stuff. Soy flour, Soy oil, no hydrogenated stuff in that, which is good. And then of course, pure wheat gluten to give it texture. Again, that's where psyllium husk would come in in a good cleaner brand, right? Then there's a company out there called Chompies, which I've seen a lot of people talk about in the keto world. Again, comes onto the court, people get excited about it because it's a keto bread. Come on, we don't have to go this route. We're looking whole wheat, soy flour, and soy oil, all about the margin very fragile. Okay. Fragile soy oil going to trigger an issue. So to recap, just when you're going to the grocery store, because they're going to start popping up in the freezer section and in the regular section, you want to avoid the sugar alcohols as much as possible. Okay. You want to watch those net carbs. Okay. You want to watch that. Don't just pay attention to fiber. It's not the end all be all. You want to be paying attention to the types of fiber, chicory root, inulin, how far down the ingredient list is it? You want to pay attention to the oils. Okay. Look for oils that are going to be more like coconut oil or egg as a fat versus soybean oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil, corn oil. Okay. Avoid the wheat gluten. Look for things like almond flour, coconut flour, even some of these other flours. There's some out there with hazelnut flour. You want to have a higher quality, more dense bread on keto than you do a fluffy bomb of different ingredients. Anyhow, keep it locked in here on my channel. And if you do want to check out Unbun Foods, I don't think you'll be disappointed. This stuff is awesome. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.